Chapter 2 A Strange Visitor The next morning Sam ate his breakfast quickly and ran to the river. He pulled his new boat down to the water and started to get it ready. I'm sorry I was angry yesterday. Sam turned round. It was Rachel. Well, I'm sorry you had to save me, Sam answered. Friends, said Rachel. Friends, said Sam. We could go sailing together today. I can come with you, show you the river, if you like, Rachel said. That sounds great, Sam answered. So Sam sailed the boat, while Rachel told him about the river and how to be safe on the water. Best of all, she told him how to make the boat go fast. Sam loved being out on the water. He turned round and saw they were far from the village. You're getting really good, said Rachel. Now, let me show you Hayden Island. But my uncle said we could only go with the rangers. I go where I want, Rachel said, smiling. They sailed the boat onto Hayden Island and tied it to a tree. At the top of the beach, Sam found the answer to his question from the night before. There, about two kilometers away, was a tall building painted red and white, with glass all round the top. That's Hayden Lighthouse, said Rachel. Let's go and see it. They started walking, but after a few minutes they had to stop. Lying on the path was a white bird with a long, black beak that looked like a spoon. It had thin fishing rope round its legs. It certainly couldn't fly, it couldn't even walk. We'll take it to my mom at her office. She's Lisa, one of the rangers your uncle told you about, said Rachel. Oh, said Sam, that explains a lot. They put the bird on to one of the sails from the boat and carried it to a building in the middle of Hayden Island. Lisa was worried about the bird. This looks serious, she said. She got some scissors and started to cut the rope. The bird's legs and feet were badly hurt. When she finished, she put the bird in a large box with some food and water. Is it going to be okay, Sam asked? It should rest for a few days, but I think it'll be okay, she explained. Well done. You too. I think you've saved that poor bird. What is it? asked Rachel. I've never seen one of those before. It's called a spoonbill because of its long beak, said Lisa. It's a very special bird. There are only about 10 of them in the whole of the UK, Lisa went over to the fridge. Here you are, she said, giving them a cold drink and some biscuits. You've earned those. At that moment, there was a loud noise from a small radio on the table. Lisa picked it up. Lisa, it was a man's voice. Get here quickly. I found the perfect place for the Americans to arrive. Where are you? Lisa asked the man. I'm at the south of Hayden Island. Oh, and Lisa, don't tell anyone where you're going. Okay, said Lisa, looking at the two kids. We won't say a word, said Rachel. Lisa jumped in her truck and drove off. Sam looked at Rachel. Who was that on the radio? And who are the Americans? asked Sam. That was my dad, Tom, on the radio. I don't know who the Americans are, said Rachel. The lighthouse will be boring after all that, she said, but let's go anyway. But we can't stay long. Mom said I have to be home for dinner. An old friend of my dad's is coming to stay. Sam didn't find the lighthouse boring at all. It was wonderful. He stood looking up at it, red and white on the blue sky, and it was right next to the sea. They walked round it until they came to a large door with a sign above. The sign had four big sailing boats on it and some words in Latin. They tried the door, but it didn't open. At that moment, they heard an engine. They looked round the side of the lighthouse and saw a boat coming fast towards them. There were two men on the boat, wearing black clothes, and they did not look friendly. Next to the lighthouse was an old building. Quick, let's go in here, said Sam, pulling Rachel inside. They pushed the door shut, but left it open a little so they could see. The boat arrived at the beach and the engine stopped. The men jumped out and pulled the boat out of the water. They started carrying boxes and bags towards where Sam and Rachel were. They came closer and closer, but fortunately they didn't stop. They walked past until they got to the lighthouse. One of the men was dark, the other was blonde, but they both had short hair and looked very strong. The blonde man took out a key and opened the lighthouse door, and they went inside. A few minutes later they came out and the blonde man spoke. Is it all working, Robert? He asked the other man. Yes, answered Robert. I can listen to every conversation on hate on island. I can also hear what the rangers and other people are saying on their phones here and in the village. Good, said the blonde man. I'm going back to the village. Sam and Rachel looked at each other in surprise. The blonde man left on the boat. Robert went into the lighthouse and closed the door. Rachel and Sam waited five more minutes. Then, without saying a word, 
They left the old building and walked very quietly back to Sam's boat on the other side of Haydon Island. They got in the boat, but didn't speak until they were almost back at the village. Who were those men? asked Sam. I don't know, but they weren't American. Their accents were certainly English, said Rachel. So, we still don't know who the Americans are. Rachel looked excited, but Sam was starting to feel worried. He tried to understand what was happening, but it really was impossible. When they got to Rachel's house, they went round to the back door and looked through the kitchen window. There was a man sitting at the table with Rachel's dad, but they couldn't see his face. Then the visitor turned round, and Sam stopped. Oh no, he said to Rachel. It's the blonde man from the lighthouse. Chapter 3 Smugglers Next morning, Rachel arrived at Andy's back door. Very early, the dogs looked happy to see her. Sam was eating another big breakfast. Hello, said Andy. You're just in time for coffee. Hello, Rachel, said Sam, with a mouth full of food, but he didn't speak again. Rachel was sitting at the table looking quietly at her cup of tea. Andy was looking at them both. You're very quiet. You too. What's wrong? Do you want to tell me something? Andy said. Sam looked at Rachel. Okay, she said. You tell him. So Sam told Andy everything about the day before. When he finished, Andy's face went white. Who is the man staying with you? He asked Rachel. He's called Michael, she answered. Dad says he's an old friend from university, but I've never heard Dad talk about him. Andy sat down at the table with them. The dogs followed and sat at his feet. Stay away from Haydon Island for now, okay, Andy said. Then he smiled. I'm not sure what's happening, but your dad will be upset with me, Sam, if you get hurt. He laughed when he said that, but it certainly wasn't a real laugh. But why, asked Sam. What are those men doing? For hundreds of years, this village was used by smugglers, Andy explained. The whole area became famous for it. People brought things here from Holland and France, and the police tried to stop them. Go on, Sam and Rachel said together. This was exciting. Andy laughed, for real this time. Well, the most famous smuggler was a woman called Margaret Catchpole. She was born near here in Wedding 762. She was in love with a dangerous smuggler, William Laud. Some people say they were on Haydon Island when the police found them. Wow, said Sam. Yes, but don't think smugglers were nice people. They were not, said Andy. People sometimes died because of what they did. And that is why I'm telling you this story. Modern smugglers are just as bad, perhaps even worse. Oh, I see, said Sam. So you think that Michael and the man at the lighthouse are smugglers? Asked Rachel. I'm sure of it, said Andy, standing up. Now, can you take Rosie and Spike for a walk for me? I've got to go out. When they heard the word walk, the two dogs started running about. Here's some money for an ice cream. Andy gave them five pounds. Then he picked up his car keys, left the house, and drove away. Where's he going? Asked Rachel. Hmm? Said Sam. I don't know, but I don't like it. I don't think the men in black are smugglers. Do you, Rachel? No, I don't, she said. They're waiting for something, and I think your uncle knows what that something is. I think it's the Americans. Rachel and Sam took the dogs to the river and walked north. They had so many questions. Why did Andy leave so quickly? Why was he so worried? What were Tom and Lisa doing at the south of Haydon Island? Who were the Americans? What was the real story? It was a beautiful day, and the dogs wanted to run. Rachel and Sam soon forgot their questions. They walked and talked for a long time until Rachel said, Oh, where are the dogs? They called and called. Rosie, Spike. But the dogs didn't come. SHH, what was that? Asked Sam. It sounded like a wolf to me. They went on a few meters. Then they had a terrible surprise because the blonde man walked onto the path in front of them. He had the two dogs with him and down on the river was his boat. How nice to see you, Rachel, Michael said but he did not smile. As you can see, I found your dogs. Take them back to your Uncle Andy, Sam. This part of the river path is closed. You cannot walk here. Okay, thanks for telling us, and thank you for finding our dog, Michael, said Rachel, looking sweet. Sam looked at her. What was she doing? Come on, Sam, let's go and get that ice cream. She turned and walked back, calling the dog, with Sam running behind her. They didn't stop until they were outside the village shop. Well, Rachel said with a big smile, this is getting exciting. Now we know where Michael keeps his bow. Yes, but how does that help us? Asked Sam. I don't know, Rachel answered, but it's information. 
and all information is good when you're in the middle of an adventure. Did you tell that man that Andy was my uncle? No, I didn't, answered Rachel. So, how did he know? And how did he know my name? Sam felt sick. Perhaps Andy was right. Perhaps Michael and the other man were dangerous smugglers. They left the dogs outside the shop with some water and went to get their ice creams. Sam always had the same ice cream, so he was quick. But Rachel took a long time to choose. As they walked out of the shop, Lisa arrived in her truck. Hello, you too, she said. I'm sorry about leaving you yesterday. Would you like to come and look at the spoonbill with me? That was better. The kids and dogs jumped into the truck and Lisa drove down to the river. But how are we going to cross the river? asked Sam, looking over to Haydon Island. Lisa got out of the truck and walked to a wide, flat boat in front of them. There was a man on the boat. He saw Lisa and smiled. Then the engine started. This is how, said Lisa, getting back into the truck. She drove towards the boat. What was she doing? Sam was sure the boat wasn't big enough to carry the truck. Lisa drove carefully and slowly onto the boat. Of course, it was exactly the right size, but it was really noisy and the dogs went crazy. Sam sat in the truck looking at the water while they crossed the river. This was amazing. You don't get things like this in London, shouted Rachel, over the noise of the dogs and the boat engine. No, you don't, said Sam. This is much better than London, he thought, but he didn't say that to Rachel. He didn't want her to win.